सो टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज टॉक इज इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ कंपटिशनल मैथमेटिक्स इन इंजीनियरिंग एंड आफ्टर वर्ल्ड एंड वाई वी आर गोइंग फॉर कंपटिशनल मैथमेटिक्स बिकॉज ड्यू टू लिमिटेशन limitation with pen and paper in order to compute complex problem so we have to go for some kind of approximation so that approximation is happening through computation and we are willing to solve that complex problem in computer and just simple problem from class 12th what you had already seen that i will start from there and i will try to give a brief uh, scenario that uh, what kind of courses you will uh, come through in during your four year btech courses and all would be computational mathematics course and how those would find application in order to solve problems related to your domain so don't worry about uh, that uh, this course is not meant for it is not it, there is no and we can't say that one course is not useful another is uh, much uh, very much useful it is not like that all courses from mathematical segment would be very much important and will play very important role in order to solve the problem so coming to first part that uh, i will talk about uh, what are the component of computational mathematics and how we can develop uh, uh, computational thinking by understanding those courses of computational mathematics okay so coming to that vision of computational mathematics in engineering what is happening why we are going for that so it main concept is that we have to develop computational thinking by using some kind of modern programming approach so what is happening that link that we are having a problem so we have formula uh, that problem problem first have to convert into some mathematics mathematical problem now we we are willing to solve that problem in computer so we need to know some kind of programming approach or some kind of kind of algorithmic approach to solve that problem in computer so that computational thinking uh, it demands what it demands core concept so what are those core concept so it happens to be abstraction that means uh, you try to take one problem and from there you are try to get some abstract idea that would help to generalize so theory of generalization then what is happening that the one problem would be very big so if there is a very big problem how we can distribute that problem into a small or small problem sub problem and uh, by solving those sub problem uh, further we can combine in order to get a uh, solution of the original problem so everywhere approximation would be there then we can talk about efficiency scalability robustness so sometime what will happen then if you are trying to solve a problem you will face problem that that your algorithm your method will stuck somewhere so you have to, it is not like that if you are stuck somewhere so you you will uh, uh, stop working there it is not like that you have to come out from the that uh, stuck situation so there you have if you put some kind of noise or some kind of randomness or some kind of disturbance that we call it so that disturbance provide to come out of come out of the that uh, stopping situation okay that we say that we try try to check robustness of our method method then we'll talk about uh, concept that are uh, taught beautifully and successfully in uh, beginning of the uh, engineering science okay Be beginning of the engineering science so those courses for example uh, very interesting kind of course will come linear algebra and uh, probability and statistics so why uh, so from the segment of probability and uh, statistics so if you talk about uh, statistics along with linear algebra it is giving a better understanding of representation of the problem so very much essential to if you are having a problem of uh, very high dimension like uh, simply in plus 2 you might have in high school you might have seen a system of equations have you seen or not anyone respond solving system of two equations yes sir okay so that one is very yeah very simple uh, equation that means just you are having two line and trying to find intersecting point uh, like that whether there is an intersecting point or not but if you are talking about bigger kind of problem that means there are uh, many many line 100 line 1000 line million line so if you are i am asking to find intersecting point of those line or plane then it would be difficult to solve directly so uh, directly dealing with uh, dealing with those uh, system of equations so what you have to do you have to can get a better representation of those system of equation and that representation better representation is given by linear algebra that we call it vector matrix vector representation of the system of linear equation and uh, through the uh, complete uh, that course of linear algebra you will see as per you go further in linear algebra in deeper uh, way then you will have a better understanding of that system of linear solution of system of linear equation 
so that it is all about the presentation so it is giving with the help of linear algebra and statistics you are getting a very good representation of bigger and complex problem okay now afterward what we, another concept will come optimization so if you are taking optimization along with the uh, linear and nonlinear analysis so don't confuse with this linear and nonlinear analysis it is just extension of uh, calculus and what you have already seen taylor's theorem or, or mean value theorem have you seen mean value theorem yeah yes, so, so that the, that that uh, uh, taylor's theorem is extension of mean value theorem and uh, that one is talking about uh, whatever problem you are having uh, you can talk about uh, approximate uh, if you are having very complex function uh, don't worry about uh, representation of that function you can uh, approximate that it pro by some kind of uh, taylor polynomial and so polynomial is very easy to deal with so, so that linear and nonlinear representation is coming. So those are actually providing this optimization, linear and nonlinear analysis, probability and statistics. Uh, statistics all those are performing uh, system modeling. If you are having problem, so with the help of the, this branch of mathematics, we would help to come up with a system modeling of the problem, relevant problem, whatever, whether it is from robotics or control theory or uh, machine learning. Now these day people are talking a lot. So or irrespective of any practical domain problem uh, you can always apply this uh, branch of computational mathematics in order to uh, perform a system modeling so this would help this would if you are having clear understanding of these courses uh, definitely it will help to perform system modeling so once you are having system modeling then what will happen that you will talk about uh, that solution of that optimal among the uh, there would be various uh, a class of uh, models so among the uh, various model you have to look for best model that best happen, happen to be in mathematics we are calling it optimal model so if you are going to find the optimal model so you have to come up with again representation will a linear algebra will give a very good representation along with solution technique to solve it uh, correctly then you have to come up with some algorithm so that you, you put that problem you can uh, solve in computer so there must be some kind of algorithm you have you should have idea of algorithm then uh, what is it i'm saying that uh, to get optimal model so that means we are trying to optimize some kind of optimization concept would be there and everyone might be aware of optimization process that in uh, in plus two you might have already seen that if you are having a function how to optimize uh, simply finding the gradient of the function equating to zero first derivative uh, if you are function of uh, having function of sem, uh, single variable then first derivative we, uh, equate first derivative to zero if you are having function of several variable then corresponding first derivative would be gradient we will call it gradient and if you are having function of one variable then second derivative is just uh, what sufficient condition for checking back uh, maxima or minima so same that second derivative it will be replaced by a hessian kind of matrix for function of several variables so just extension would be there sub extension kind of approach you will see there and those will help to solve that uh, uh, formulated problem using some practical algorithm in computer so you want to solve that in um, computer further once you are solving a problem then probability statistics uh, statistics and linear and nonlinear analysis will come in order to infer so once you are having solved by one problem you are having an optimal uh, model optimal solution so what you will do with that you have to infer about you have to so so you have to infer about the about the problem from where that has been originated so you have to infer about so, so probability is playing very important role uh, in the process of inference or uh, that we call it uh, statistical inference so it, you will see really really interesting once you are having uh, idea of statistical inference you can so based on that you can make a decision so decision so probability statistic and linear and nonlinear analysis in together all these are helping to make decision based on this uh, problem and once you are having optimal solution of that problem so based on that you can make a decision whether uh, you have to choose this or that so that situation so for simple example like that uh, uh, i have taken it uh, various example uh, one example simply uh, suppose you are trying to uh, see two type of objects uh, around you are having two type of object, object around you so how you can uh, decide uh, uh, definitely uh, there are two type of object 
and one suddenly one object you are picking how you will decide that object will fall in one class or class two so that means you have to come up with some kind of classification problem so that uh, that would be classification problem then uh, there would be problem for formulation then you have to get optimal model among the uh, set of model you have to get optimal model by optimizing it and after that once a new uh, input is coming so you can infer about whether it will be uh, in this class 1 or class 2 and that means you are making a decision based on new incoming input okay so that uh, optimal model will give uh, some kind of decision making based on probability or inferential probability that that would be part of that so coming to further uh, uh, more local to computational mathematics what are the foundation course that you will see here in the beginning of your uh, semester so that course actually uh, these are designed in the why these are uh, these courses are concept conceptual blend of tradition in computational mathematics with a strong outward looking component that means it try to connect with other courses which will come in later semester or simply simply you can say that these courses some it would be uh, prerequisite for other courses or other applicable kind of courses or uh, simply like machine learning i like uh, information theory like control theory kind of things would come there robotics kind of thing so these courses would be very uh, important component of those uh, uh, further higher semester courses in order to understand and in order to solve the problem uh, from that domain okay so first uh, first course you will see here in this uh, institute that would be calculus calculus uh, every you you may uh, again raise a question uh, because you people all uh, already have gone through calculus in plus two so why again you are going calculus here in this uh, why you will opt for calculus because here cal uh, in plus two mostly you have seen calculus uh, about function of one variable but here you will see advanced calculus that would come as a function of several variable that would be much more interesting you will see in order to solve problem okay so here in calculus uh, have you seen convergence of iterative process for practicals uh, any iterative process have you seen anyone would like to answer have you seen any iterative process in calculus no idea which process it, any iterative iteration have you seen any iteration there in calculus in plus two sir what is an iterative process sequencing sequencing have you seen no no no, no sir no sir have you then what about sequence sequence is what kind of thing sequence uh, it is iteration means uh, it is kind of term wise kind of notice first term second term third term fourth term i likewise it will go on so if you are taking a sequence uh, generally i'm not talking about finite sequence take infinite sequence so where the terms of sequence uh, finally it will go so have you seen sequences or not yes sir is this like yes sir yes sir sequence yes, and series yeah sequence and series series is some sum of term of the sequences so the, if you are taking a sequence that one is a, a specific example of iterative process what we call it so if you are having a sequence you have to talk about uh, uh, infinite sequence or there are infinite number of terms so where that sequence sequence we is what is what is meaning of uh, uh, where that sequence after a certain number of first few terms where the sequence will converge or diverge have you heard heard the idea of convergence or divergence Geometric progression, which has a common ratio of less than one, it converges to a value. Yeah, geometric, whether it is geometric, arithmetic, or uh, harmonic, whatever, every uh, whatever sequence you will have, you have to talk about uh, convergence. So sequence is a specific example of iteration process. So why I'm talking about here sequences? So whatever problem you are willing to solve in computer, you have to convert that problem into iterative process into iterative process like if you are willing to optimize a function so that optimization of function directly computer doesn't know to find derivative of a function and uh, uh, equate to zero and uh, that computer would want say that uh, at this point derivative would be zero it would be because any at any point derivative might be zero derivative of function might be zero so computer doesn't know computer work in iterative process or in some some kind of process so you have to convert minimization of a problem you have to convert into in term of iterative process or some kind of sequence some kind of sequence some some a special kind of sequence would be there so you will talk about convergence of sequence so, uh, 
whatever problem would be there, you have to convert into iterative process and get this practical solution of that one. That solution would be not exact solution, a true solution, but that would be an approximate solution. So when you are talking about approximate solution, so there would be error. So you also you have to compute error. So all those things, uh, it is just uh, one what uh, very interesting application of Taylor's theorem, what we call it. In Taylor's theorem, you will see all those kind of things. So Taylor theorem, convergence of iterative process, all those are part of uh, uh, which course is deciding all those things, calculus. So you will see cal uh, application of calculus in the process of uh, uh, iterative uh, to establish convergence of iterative process and uh, to approximate a complex function by a Taylor's polynomial or to give a linear structure. Okay, so we will talk further about linear algebra. So why linear algebra? Again, it will come to visualize a complex linear system through simple decomposition approach and whatever uh, decomposition you will perform there in linear algebra that ha that would happen to be always optimal. So that op so one linear algebra is what uh, uh, you can do optimization without calculus. So that projection, uh, rotation, uh, translation and all those are linear operation what we call it. So whatever you will do in linear algebra, here in linear algebra you don't need calculus, you do optimization with the help of linear algebra, but linear algebra is confined to only linear system. That system of linear equation uh, till now what you had already seen in your high school. So that uh, if you are willing to uh, talk about linear system simply that you talk about system of two linear equations. So further if you, uh, there would be one more course optimization. So once you are having optimization, so it lever uh, optimization, it is leveraging the geometry of optimization problem. So if uh, that uh, the function what you are going to optimize, uh, you have to see the geometry whether it is convex or non-convex. So convex is simple bowl kind of shape. If function is bowl kind of shape, so always you can see that you will get a solution, optimal solution. You will get always got opti optimal solution. Okay. And uh, 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 what is happening that you can find that optimal solution algorithmically in computer that means practically in computer you can find that solution okay and that uh, algorithmic technique i will discuss in this uh, talk as well okay further what is happening that come if you talk about another course that probability and statistics so uh, ultimate part of uh, statistics is that it do two things either it try to estimate a function that means you are having few observation uh, from the suppose you are having function y equal to f of x y equal to f of x and you don't know what is f Okay, you don't know what is f. So that is the problem. So this situation you are having y equal to, you know that there are two variable y, what is name of y? Anyone would like to suggest what we call it y and what is name of x? Definitely you will have idea. Y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. Yeah, very nice. It is from mathematical perspective. But if you are from uh, uh, any domain, any domain, then you can call x is input and y is response. So if you give this input, then this is the response. So here that is the, so that means you are having a pair, pair of points. So first uh, coordinate we call it uh, input and second coordinate we call it response or also you can call it output. So and relation between this is f, that rule uh, function we call it. Suppose this function is not known to you, it is don't know what is that function, just you are having few observation, few uh, value of x and y you are having. Based on that you have to estimate, you have to estimate f, that means estimation is what we are calling it learning, you have to learn f. Okay, F again you are having uh, two, uh, two kind of uh, object, one is a dot kind of things, another is a star kind of thing, something like that. So this kind of things, this situation. So what is happening that uh, you need to, uh, so if new thing is coming, you have to uh, correctly classify where the, that uh, that will fall. So you have to come up with a decision boundary. So uh, above the decision boundary, dots are there. Behind the decision boundary, a cross are there. Cross, so that you have to decide. That, uh, that means it is just a linear function again. So you have, or it is one kind of line or high plane or something like that. You have to estimate this, either you have to estimate this plane or you have to estimate uh, F. So what situation, simply I am saying that one kind of problem, you can take it like this way. All these are from statistic segment. Suppose uh, uh, you, you measure height and weight uh, measure of, of few student, okay. Height and weight of few student. 
and you are um, few people uh, we have taken and we took measurement of height and weight of those person okay and based on that so this would be input these two would be input height and weight measurement of height and weight observation of height and weight would be input and now uh, response you can define as per your choice like suppose they are participating in um, marathon or in some running competition or some kind of a sports so what would be there so there would be one thing is that uh, uh, speed is the response or output you can say that so a speed would be function of height and weight so you have to find the what is the uh, so just you are having data a few observation few observation that few people are there so you can observe these three quantity and you will say that this a speed is function of height and weight but you don't know uh, the what kind of function this okay how so you have to estimate this one so that we are calling it learning of function s is function of height and weight you have to learn this one so here a speed is what it is it is taking value from interval a speed can't take value like it is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 like it is taking value from interval uh, another problem you can define so this one is coming in uh, it is talking about uh, estimation of the function f another problem is talking about that uh, uh, if you are having height and weight and based on height and weight you can uh, decide function is of uh, 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 that person is a smaller person or medium person or uh, uh, taller function taller function so here that that time s would take uh, discrete value a fixed value that uh, either a small or medium or uh, taller so that s is not taking uh, uh, value from interval or something like that but here a speed is taking value from interval but in second in uh, so in the first case that problem we will talk about uh, uh, learning of uh, simply we call it regression problem for uh, where the response is taking value con from continuous uh, set continuous set or interval when response is taking value from interval then that time the problem we will call it regression problem and when uh, s is taking value or response is taking value from uh, discrete set or you can call it uh, uh, simply categorical categorical set that few finite value are there uh, to take uh, to be assigned by the response then it would be classification problem that situation so so you can decide what kind of problem would be there and if it, this one is a classic classification problem you have to come up with decision boundary okay you will learn all those things there and in other courses as well now other concept in optimization itself i told that uh, uh, optimization uh, if you are going to optimize a function and function is very complex like this kind of thing so definitely if you are applying one <laughs> iteration method some kind of method uh, algorithmic method so that method will uh, stuck somewhere it will not give the global solution the global minima so you have to put some kind of randomness in order to uh, come out from the local minima and uh, to arrive near to global minima so that means we are trying to talk about a stochastic optimizer a stochastic means randomness so we are putting some kind of randomness in order to come out of the uh, stuck region so if you are going to a stuck somewhere so you have to come out of the stuck so it is not like that uh, in algorithm another person will come and push that uh, uh, term to go further it is not like that that uh, pushing uh, pushing or pulling of that term would happen have to be happen itself through algorithm so that uh, that can happen through noise some kind of noise or some kind of randomness now i will take uh, so uh, my allotted time is just 45 minutes uh, th 30 minute is already over so here I will take uh, simple thing from uh, calculus that you had already gone through so sequence of numbers real numbers and how sequence of real number is uh, helping to understand uh, that algorithm iterative process uh, algorithm to solve a iterative pro process algorithmically and uh, also you have to visualize set how that uh, one set uh, very specific set happen to be countable set what is the countable set it is not uh, uh, not a complex thing so sequence you know that we always denote it by curly bracket so x n n belongs to natural number so tell me what is sequence anyone 
This one is the representation of sequence. Sequ what is sequence? Order, yeah, order is uh, terms are always in order. Okay, that that very fine. That's why it is different from set. But if I'm asking to define to define a sequence, how you will define? So sequence it happens to be function of uh, function with uh, domain set of natural number and range happens to be real number. It is a function from set of natural so number. Complex number are included in sequence. Definitely, that would be complex sequence. I'm right now talking about sequence in R, sequence of real numbers. Okay, so your codomain must be R. Codomain is R, so real number. So this uh, one extra line is coming to represent it, set of real number. And when you are having countable set, what is meaning of countable set? That means if you are having a set and you are you are willing to put all the member of that set in a single sequence, then that set would be countable set. And if you fail to put the, every member of that sequence in a single sequence, uh, every member of that set in a single sequence then you will say that set is not a countable set so countable so sequence and countable set is having very interesting kind of region, uh, uh, relation that means if you are taking a set s call it a s so always you can find a bijection of uh, uh, bijection between this set s and set of natural number and you had already seen that uh, uh, sequence is, uh, domain of sequence happens to be always natural number so that's why uh, based on the pattern or definition of sequence we can always say that a countable set if a set is a countable set we can always put that set every member of that set in a single sequence that means there would be a single sequence uh, sequence which which can represent every member of the set so that is the definition of countable set and uh, another would be which is not countable that would fall in uncountable set so that one is of the set of rational number and other kind of things would be uncountable set but if you are starting from uh, natural number to whole number to integer so all these are uh, countable set integers and along with rationals all these are countable set so always you can define so identity function is defined between natural number to natural number itself so that's why it would be a uh, countable set also you can define here we i have taken few example you will see it here like this way simply same thing i am saying it here so sequence uh, simply sequence of real number it happens to be a function from set of natural number to r and we represent sequence by this this is the representation of sequence okay here we call it xn is the nth term all these are definition that you have already seen okay a few example if you are taking that like if you are taking a sequence it happens to be infinite number of terms it is a that means i am not talking about finite sequence i am talking always when there is a sequence so talk about infinite sequence so if you are so this is a sequence so this is the simple representation of this infinite sequence this is the representation set theory representation and this we call it uh, we represent this sequence by nth term here nth term is 1 by twice of n okay there is another kind of sequence that we call it iterative sequence this is the iterative sequence what if, what would happen here initial value of the uh, first term of the sequence would be given first term or second term or some initial term of the sequence would be given and uh, n plus 1 term would be function of the penultimate term so this this would be some that means uh, here this one is the xn is the you call it present uh, term and x n plus 1 would be just next feature or feature term simply you can call it uh, next feature term so next feature term happens to be function of the present term so that uh, that this this way of representation of sequence we call it iterative uh, iterative representation of the sequence so always every sequence uh, can be can have this kind of iterative representation so if you are having this kind of sequence we'll talk about the convergence of the sequence or where so what is happening that uh, so there are infinite number of terms uh, of the sequence so what you will see that if a sequence happens to be convergent so after leaving first few terms rest of the term condense near to very uh, a specific kind of number very specific number that we have to find it how that number is coming so here we will play some epsilon delta ball so all these are uh, analytic uh, way to understand uh, convergence of sequence you need to uh, establish that you have to play the, those epsilon and k game k is natural number epsilon is a real number that means uh, 
how much near you want to reach to that condensed point so where sequence after leaving few terms rest of rest of the term of the sequence falls uh, within if silent distance of that a specific point like if you are taking a sequence 1 by n so uh, with a suitable choice of epsilon you will see that uh, first uh, after leaving first few term uh, almost every term falls in the neighborhood of zero uh, in near about zero so all these are having mathematical basis uh, how these are coming these relation are coming this one is this proof you can establish with the help of archimedes property i will discuss so it is simply it's saying that uh, if you are taking a sequence 1 by n so 1 by n is uh, less than epsilon 1 by n is minus 0 less than epsilon it simply say that uh, after leaving k number of terms uh, uh, other uh, other rest of the term of the sequence is very near to 0 like here 0 is here so after leaving uh, few term of the sequence uh, like uh, leaving one first term would be one second term would be one by two third term would be uh, one by three likewise so if you are taking epsilon equal to uh, point one that means one by ten one by ten so first ten leave first ten, ten term and rest of terms would be within zero and epsilon just leave first term what are the first term it is one one by two and it will go up to one by n one by ten okay afterward rest of terms what will come uh, come so there are infinitely many terms so those would those would fall here it, it, those would be between 0 to if silent okay that's why we say that uh, 1 by n is approaching to 0 because ultimately uh, eventually the term of the sequence comes very near to 0 so if silent is totally your choice someone is willing to come very near to 0 so you have to take much is a smaller epsilon so remember that epsilon is all uh, always positive real number you have to take positive you take 0 0.1 you take 0 0.01 you take 0 0.03 0 0.001 so it depends upon how much how much near to zero you want to arrive okay based on that uh, so this simply we call it uh, so here k equal to 10 here if silent if you are taking 0.1 then k equal to 10 so you are playing if silent k game so that means uh, you are leaving first k term and rest of the terms will fall in the uh, if silent neighborhood or if silent near to 0 if silent this we simply say that if silent near to 0 that means between 0 to if silent so that is the uh, geometrical visualization of uh, convergence of a sequence so another picture I have taken it here like this way. If you are taking a sequence like the uh, 2 into minus 1 by 2 to the power n, that this sequence definitely it is going to converge to 0. So if you geometrically you are willing to see that uh, if you come up with a suitable epsilon, so you, so what will happen? Uh, this is the epsilon band, call it. It is 0 plus epsilon this would be uh, 0 minus epsilon so after leaving if you are taking epsilon uh, 0.1 or something like that uh, with respect to that you, you will get a k some k and uh, uh, first k term would be the here like this way maybe within epsilon band and maybe outside epsilon band like this point is outside epsilon this point is outside after that eventually all the term of the sequence falls within the epsilon band that is the meaning of convergence geometrically how you call it meaning of convergence so that convergence of sequence you had already seen that but here you will try to see it through geometrical visualization or uh, you have to compose it with anal analytical approach as well so that we call it epsilon k game so i have taken a lot of example i, I don't have much time i will talk about other things as well so so countable set i had already discussed that uh, so you are having lot of points lot of points simply you are having a set with lot of points then whether that set is uh, countable or not so simply one sense that uh, if you are willing to put that uh, those points of the set in a single sequence remember that in a single sequence then you will claim that that point set happens to be a countable set if you fail to pu put uh, every term of the sequence in a every term of the set in single sequence then it would be 
not a countable. So that uh, one example that says set of natural number is countable because it, so you can put uh, uh, here set of positive real number you can call it, uh, it is a countable set. Why? Because through this sequential representation we can put uh, uh, this term into a single sequence like this way it is n. Nth term is n. Okay, nth term is n. Likewise, also if you are taking natural number, uh, sorry, if you are taking uh, integers, so integer is also uh, a countable set. How you can define? Uh, take uh, even integers. Okay, uh, or simply there are. If you are going from set of natural number to uh, z, so you can define a bijection mapping like this way. So take a even number. Even number it is even an odd number is it is defined for only natural number. It is not for like uh, there is no concept of a negative even integer or positive negative uh, odd integer like that. So only for natural number we are defining even uh, or odd number. Okay. So we are defining a bijective function from n to z like this way. We, we are defining like when n is even, so divide just divided by two, so it will be it will give what positive integers. Okay, if n is odd, then subtract it by minus one and divide it by two and take negative that. Then this will give uh, negative integers. Okay, when n equal to one, it will map to zero. So it is like this way. This situation it is coming. So you are starting with natural number. Natural number I start with one. 2, uh, 3 and it will go on like that, 4, 5 and you are trying to define a bijection from natural number n to integers z. So how you will define a bijection? Easily you can define bijection like this. integer is having member 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, it will go on like that. And here in left side we, we will have minus 1, minus 2, so these are integers. Everyone might be aware of this. So how we define bijection? So bijection is going from uh, natural number to z. So 1 will map to 0, 2 will map to 1 because we, we divide uh, even number by 2 and 4 will map to 2 and where 3 will map? We, if it is odd number, we have to subtract it by minus 1 and after that we have to divide it by 2 and have to take negative. So 3 minus 1, 2 and divide by 2. So it becomes uh, 1 and take negative. So 3 will map to uh, minus 1, yes. 5 will map to minus 2, that means odd, okay, odd natural number map to negative integers, even natural number map to positive integers and 0, 1 will map to 0. So that is the process. Okay. So it is a bijection, complete bijection you can see like. So hello, any question? Okay, fine. Likewise, also you can define bijection from uh, z to n. Reverse you can go. So reverse bijection is like this way. This is the reverse bijection. 